Is it the first time you're you're podcasting with like a close friend? Yeah, like? first time. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, some of the people I got were close, like Raymond, the book. Yeah, but like you guys have a very professional <laughs> relationship. No, we're, we talk about dicks too. Well, fine. <laughs> I'm not the first guy yeah, I talk about dicks. Put that in. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Foo Show. I'm your host, Coach Ali Foo Show. Today's episode, episode number 22, is a very special episode because I have a very special guest. Normally, the guest that I would have on the show would be fitness professionals. So whether they be strength and conditioning coaches, personal trainers, the likes, or like top tier power lifters, like the country's best... My guest today is nothing close to that, but I guess I can say that, to my knowledge, he's probably the strongest muralist slash artist uh, in the Philippines right now, and his name is Jappy Agoncillo. Jappy, can you say hi to everyone? Uh, Hi, everyone. That was that was a really interesting uh, intro. It really, you know, makes me super confident. Yes, of course. And uh, to those of you who don't know Jappy, um, probably because. If you're a follower of this podcast, you're into fitness, maybe you're not so much into the art scene or specifically the local art scene. So just to let everyone know that this man is everywhere. His his work is everywhere in Metro Manila. You can find his work in BGC, Alabang, Makati, Green Hills, Pasig. The name, the cities go on and on. He has had an amazing past few years. I'll name some of his... uh, I guess my favorite projects. He had a recent project with Marvel Studios. He has a mural at BGC for Thor Love and Thunder. He's had a project with Sony PlayStation. He had a mural of God of War. And he also had, and that project was in collaboration with Casetify. So if you guys have the recent smartphones, you can check out, check it out on Casetify. Uh, he also also had a project with Adidas. He has his very own um, basketball shoe because he's a very professional basketball player. I love basketball. He loves basketball, and uh, with that Adidas uh, project, he also has his own clothing collection, uh, probably around four or five shirts, right? Uh, that collection. Four, four shirts, four shirts came out. And uh, another one that I guess a lot of people know is that he has a project with Shake Shack. He has a mural with them and his very own Jappy Burger. <laughs> I wish <laughs> that would be I great. Wish. That was a joke. That was a joke. But uh, that'd be great though if there was a Jappy Burger. Eh? I think twenty. All right, but of course, uh, these are just the highlights that Jappy has uh, within the past few years. The reason why I wanted him to be in this podcast, despite him not being um, primarily in a fitness personality, is because when it comes to going for your goals, like if you have dreams, if you have some things that you want to achieve in life. There's a lot of hard work. And of course, these might be the highlights that um, these are some of the highlights that Jappy has under his name. But no one or not everyone can see all the hard work that he's put into for the past few years, probably actually a decade of him mastering his craft. So first thing that I want to talk about is Jappy. Can you let everyone know how we became friends? How we became friends. First of all, I wish I wore a sound to this because now i don't feel fit at all uh <laughs> how, how did we become friends the real story or the, <laughs> the story that's not gonna get either of us canceled ah well uh mutual so we can- <laughs> <laughs> no, uh yeah we met in high school and um i just i became friends with his friends and we just really got along and somehow 10 10 plus years later oh yeah yeah we're close friends um, the reason why later. we don't want to give out the the true stories because it's going to get both of us canceled. So if ever you see us uh, in person, just ask us. We were kids, basically. <laughs> Again, uh, to put it into context, to date us becoming friends, this was around 2012. 2010 to 2012. Actually, 2010. 2010 so. so we've been friends for 12 years. 12 years. Oh, wow. Damn, we're old. <laughs> so we're 15. So if you guys do find out the real reason, forgive us. We're forgive us. But anyway, um, we're... Actually, when we say that we're friends, we're actually pretty good friends to the point that we have matching tattoos. Can you see my pineapple tattoo? Cameraman, can you verify that it's seen in this shot? <laughs> <laughs> it's much uh, bigger than Fusho's, so everyone... Uh, mine is bigger <laughs> than Fusho's. Uh, my pineapple tattoo is a band here. Uh, 16 pineapples to represent 
these just kidding they're just 16 because it fits 16 my room arm. 16 year old um just to let people know um the cameraman that we have today is mr rocco ruiz or rocco bill more uh, famously known he also has a pineapple tattoo but he's fully clothed right now for him to show it would i would guess demonetize this episode <laughs> we'll, we'll look at it later though we'll look at it later obviously <laughs> All right, so of course, we have some questions here lined up for Jappy today. Um, again, he is a local artist, local muralist. And of course, down the line throughout this episode, we'll be talking about his future plans. But of course, um, knowing that we were friends, I've known him, for, so of course, since high school. And I also knew that when we went to college, you went to UST first in the art course there. And at that time, or like a few months or a year after that, I know that you shifted to DLSU for legal management. Yeah. What made you make that shift? Um, wow. Uh, this is something I never actually told you guys, I think. I think I told Rocco, though. Um, I think it was a mixture of a lot of burnout. When you go to college for something you truly love, like art, uh, you can get lost in thinking it's, it's romantic, right? I'm in art school. I'm going to become an artist. But then you get reality hits you that it's not actually that kind of beautiful and and fantasy stuff whatever it's actually really hard and they kind of crush your dreams a bit so i said maybe this is not for me and i decided i just want to do my the thing i wanted to do that's not law that's not art was to become a lawyer so i shifted to dlsu where my my best friends were um where my sister was and just you know in general just thought maybe a, a fresh start would do um so yeah and then i shifted to legal management to become a lawyer um, and as you mentioned, this is because you thought that this would be the more realistic one, um, realistic option, because of course, um, you know, following your passions is great and all, but there has come, there has to be a point in your life where you have to have some realism. But despite you going to DLCU, and I know that you finished college, you've got your um, legal management degree, what still, what was your mindset when you made that decision to go all in for your art for your all in for your freelance art i think at the time my mindset really was that if it's something that i love for sure i will figure out a way to do it um because it it, it really made sense to me i was what 20 years old when i decided there was this was going to be my life and i thought i i thought that if it was something i was really sure about then nothing would stop me from making it work whether it be the people were saying it was impossible at the time, like there's no way you're going to make a living through art. There's no way you're going to succeed. It's not practical, whatever. I said, I'm going to make it practical. I'm going to have to find a way to make it work. So during college, you're just a lot of mental mind, like your mindset was really shifting because you wanted to go into art, wanted to be more practical, went to legal management. But then afterwards, you realize that this is something that you know is going to be a part of your life mm -hmm. or it's something that's a part of who you are. For sure, So yeah. you still went for us. So as you made uh, took the plunge to go all in for <coughs> your uh, art, how confident were you when you took the plunge? <laughs> uh, not super confident. I mean, because it's never... I wouldn't say it's never been done before, but I would say that it's not well documented. This was way before social media, way before the internet was full of all the answers. It's making, You're making it sound like you were... <laughs> Like pre-internet, are we that? <laughs> there old? was internet, but it wasn't like you know. Now you can just go to a TikTok and say three tips to become an artist and make money. Now there wasn't any of that. It was really yeah, just like true. Google it and maybe you'll find an answer. So I wasn't that confident, but I really said if I can't find the answers elsewhere, I'm gonna have to make the answers up myself. Okay, you know. Okay, so that's of course that's really what you call dedication to make sure that what you love is what you actually you know really pursue. Mm -hmm post-college despite it not being similar or not being close to the course that you graduated in <laughs> not at all um you and i have that in common because um i mentioned this in the show before i am a graduate of the <laughs> philosophy major and ever since I'm, i graduated there's nothing that i've done that is close to you know um being like a lawyer because normally I, if people go into um philosophy for their course they go into being a lawyer similar to legal management of course, you and I, were not lawyers nah. today, so we went for something really different from what we studied for. But of course, that's what we call taking the plunge, being even though if we're not 100% confident in our decisions, it's always about like taking a bet on yourself. That's as right. Well. Yeah. yeah. And, and really finding a way. You have to really, well, uh, you know, like us, 
we didn't know it was going to work before. We said we're going to do everything we can to make it work because yeah. the 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 other option of not being able to do it of failing is just not it's not viable for us to yeah, fail. Absolutely. Now, I know you also did one of your first mural projects um, was in school as well. <laughs> and of course, um, after that project, there were some projects more and more. What project made you feel like, hey, like this is it? Like I'm actually like there's a strong chance that you can make things work. Uh, mm. Something like I guess I can phrase it like the snow, the point where the snowball started to like, uh, roll or yeah. like your big break per se. <clears throat> I'd say I think I did something for SM. Uh, which one? Which project was it? Was it was it was a it was for SM Youth. So SM has the department stores, right? They had SM Youth, which was kind of their their young millennial kind of thing for for teenagers for kids. And then they had this bus. So the bus was meant to go to different cities uh, and be kind of the satellite shop for their events. And they wanted me to paint the bus. Ooh. So I thought it was already an interesting project. And then the guy from SM. Um, Alex was like really, really hyped on my work. He really wanted me to work for them. And there was an, it was a well-known brand. So immediately once I got the, got the project, I thought, I think this is it because it's, it's a big brand. If I tell my parents about this, they're going to stop bugging me about getting a real job. They'll be like, <laughs> Hey, maybe it's going to work. So yeah, I think once it, once my, my friends and my family started realizing, wait, that's a, that's an actual thing. That's when it really felt like maybe this could really work. And of course, after that project, because of the success, people, um, I guess your name is starting to really get out there. More projects just started to come on your way. That's really good. Now, of course, that was like years ago. Let's fast forward a bit more, something that's a bit more timely for what's going to happen um, in the very near future, literally within this week that we are filming this episode. Um, so, of course, we are talking about how Jappy started back in college. Fast forward now to 2023, January. It ain't no secret already because um, I also actually saw it as well on your Instagram that you posted that it's no secret anymore. Just today. Just today that um, you will be moving to <coughs> New York City. Mm -hmm. Now... Similar to the previous question that I had about taking the plunge after college, um, like to go, despite you getting a legal management degree, like how confident you were, you said that you were not that confident to take the plunge to go all into art. How confident are you about your big move to New York City? Oh, this is, this is tough because now I can't be like, mm, I'm super confident. Uh, I am halfway confident, I think. Like if I were to gauge it, I know. I'm, I'm, I trust in my ability now that I've been tested through years and years of, of work that I can trust that I will do whatever it takes to make it work and I have the ability to find a way. It's just, you know, the things that I can't control, I'm trying not to think about too much. Like, um, I can only control how I work, what I do, who I talk to, how proactive I am in searching for success or searching for projects to do. But... That's only half of the equation. So I'm halfway confident. I'm, half, I'm confident that about what I can do. I'm just very unsure about how it's going to go. Okay. I mean, that's very understandable. Of course, even though if you put in a lot of hard work, you don't know or you're not, you can't be precisely sure on what's exactly going to happen despite all the work that you're going to be putting. But of course, you have your friends here that are going to be rooting for you because, of course, we believe in you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We, we believe in him uh, for what he's going to do. Uh, obviously, I am no art expert, but so of all the major cities, I guess that, you know, have art in their like culture, what makes New York City so special for you? Why did you decide on New York to be your next big move? I think it, it's both kind of a uh, practical, it's a practical move and also just a vibe. Ooh, it's Gen Z words, vibe. It's a vibe move. Practically because all the agencies are there, all these businesses and offices are there, so if the most the likelihood of the amount of clients that are going to be there is higher than any any other place. It's just like how actors go to Los Angeles mm. and Hollywood because all the studios are there. Um, so that's the same with New York. All the illustration agencies, all the companies are there. People who would be likely to hire me, but also the vibe in New York is super different. They're very welcoming of of outsiders. It is New York, the melting pot. Um, street art is also super big there. It's really, I wouldn't say really easy, but it's definitely like easier than most places to just go to a spot, 
and just start working on mm -hmm. something. And people just love the art, love the culture. And that's what I want. I, I want to kind of be part of that community, to be part of that, that vibe. Okay. So speaking of vibe and culture, I guess New York does fit who you are because I know that you're a big fan of uh, comic books. So a lot of, I guess, you know, like, uh, again, I'm no expert, but a lot of these, the comics that we've read, Spider-Man, I guess. <laughs> Just Spider-Man. That's the only one I know that's in New York, so I'm pretty sure there are more. But I guess comic books and New York is... I mean, there's a lot of representation of New York in comic books, and I know you're a huge fan of them. I guess and that's on, it does fit your personality since a lot of the art styles that you yeah. have are comic book style as well. All right. So now that you're going to be moving to New York City... Do you have any specific goals that you've had? So, of course, you've had major projects here, whether that be a mural, whether that be a shoe, whether that be a shirt or your own burger. Um, do, you have any Someday. <laughs> do you have any specific goals that you'd want um, to accomplish in New York? I think in terms of specific goals, it's hard to tell now because I'm not there and I don't know how I can't get a good read on how things are going to go. But definitely a goal is to to be as productive as possible because, you, you know, it could, sometimes you could start feeling like a vacation. You're not at home. It's a different place. You're, there's so many things to explore. Unlike here, you've seen it all. I've seen it all. So I can just be like, oh, stay at home and work. So a big goal for me is to stay productive throughout the year, no matter how hard it gets, maybe at least churn out a couple of projects per month, whether that's personal or, or, or with a client or something. Um, but yes, nothing too specific. I just want to be productive and to to really establish myself as a part of the the art scene there. Okay. Um, just network and see a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, and share the culture. Share, be part of that. That's that's mostly the goal. I guess um, very similar to how you did things here in the Philippines in Manila. There is no specific roadmap. It was just more of you putting in the work and then hopefully people would recognize the hard work, recognize the skills, the talents that you possess in the hopes that they'll be, you know, yeah. pushing you for projects. Right? I think that's the kind of thing. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, one day I'm going to get a shoe. I never thought I would get a shoe. But my goal when I started was like, just make stuff, keep making stuff, put it out there, establish yourself and it'll, it'll kind of work itself out and those projects will come. Um, there's a saying I always say to myself that uh, Steve Martin, the comedian, said, he said, be so good, they can't ignore you. That's so true. it's just like, just put in the good work, put in the hard work, and then things will work itself out. Another saying that I know that you and I um, love referring to would be to be proud but never satisfied. Um, this is one major milestone or one major move that you're aiming to do, to move to New York City. Um, and actually, not just to move there, but to, quote unquote, to make it in new york city hopefully but before that of course you had to quotation marks make it here in manila i know making it is you know, kind of vague and i know that you're going to be kind of too modest to admit it but despite here in uh despite your success here in manila why would you still push for new york you can i i guess you have a lot of projects here why not just um be comfortable that your name is already quite apparent quite popular here why still push for this drastic move to New York City instead of just churning out more projects, more more big projects here in the Philippines? Um, I think it's it's kind of this uh, it's a legacy thing. I think you know it's 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 part of the the work that I want to do is not just be satisfied. We always said like proud but not satisfied. I'm proud of the work I've done here. I've done a lot of good stuff here. I'm just, I feel really blessed to have been able to do them. But I I always want to keep going. Keep seeing where I can push it because really seeing how far I can go, even if it's not that far, even if in New York, what if like in the first couple of months I crash and burn, come back here, at least I know I tried. Um, if I stay here and I and, and get comfortable with who I am and what I've done here and never make the, the jump, never make the leap, I'll always ask myself, like, what if I, I tried for a bigger audience or uh, a greater stage you know, there's nothing wrong with, with staying here and, and being you if you're comfortable Absolutely. here. But but for me personally, I want to keep pushing the envelope, seeing how far I can take it. All right. That's actually really inspiring because, of course, a lot of people might be like, oh, you're doing so well here. Now, why are you going to? Uh, I guess you're not really risking it all, but you're still risking a big part of like your like your it's a big investment for you to make that move. So for you to really 
push for yourself, that's really uh, really inspiring to just never be comfortable, never be complacent, and just really push yourself to see how far can you actually evolve. And that's really good to hear. To and hear. I think that's a mindset thing because a lot of people have been telling me, like, why leave? Because you're successful here. You have the projects here. You're a name here. Why would you go somewhere and be a nobody again? Um, it's part of the mindset, like, how can we get better from this? You know, I, I'm a big fan of these these uh, athletes who who have reached success and they never get satisfied. They want more. And I think it's the same thing. Um, just the championship mentality, as Sebum mm-hmm. says, right? Like, he's the three-time Mr. Olympia. Why would he go for four? Because he wants to try. And I think I got the same kind of mindset. All right. That's great. I mean, of course, if you just want to be the best or, like, keep on pushing yourself to be the best that you can be, you just got to keep on putting the work in. All right. So once you're there in New York already, and and if I guess you've made it or whatever the definition of making it is there, do you think... Or do you plan to fully move there once you've accomplished a lot of your major goals, whatever it may be? Or do you plan to come back here to the Philippines, to Manila, to bring back the culture that you've been par- a part of there in New York? Hmm, I can't say for sure. Uh, I think it really depends on how things go there and here. Because the the industry here is also rapidly, rapidly growing. Um, there might, you know, I could go to New York and then absorb the culture there but the philippines could very well catch up and it, it's very close to catching up in terms of you know how advanced and how developed the the industry is here how advanced the art scene is here um i might not have to come back i'd love to do that though like go to new york learn what i can bring it back here and kind of you know kind of grow something as well be part of the growth of the industry here um, but we'll see what happens in the next few years if uh, if that's still the case, if they still need that. All right. So no concrete plans. And I guess that's a fair answer. But nonetheless, whether or not you'll stay there or come back, this move of yours, we can all bet that afterwards, whether that be two, three years or like five or ten years, you'll be a better person or like a better, you'll evolve to a new and improved Japia Agoncillo. For sure, it's going to be... I'm going to change. For sure, there's going to be growth involved. You can't just go through a a move like this and put, like you said, well, it's true, put most of it, if not all of it, on the line um, to try and become a success somewhere else and not change and not grow. So whether or not I fail, actually, it's still some sort of growth. And yes, it will be, I will come back new. I don't know about improved, but new. <laughs> okay. Nonetheless, you are going to evolve for better or for worse. Let's just say assume better. Hopefully better. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you are in this position to make these like great strides in your career because you started by making baby strides or like smaller, humbler strides way back in college or maybe like way back when, whenever you first started doing art. Now, uh, we talked about hard work, but let's be a bit more specific. When you were trying to build yourself up in your career, build your reputation, what specific steps did you make to put yourself out there? Um, well, that's super lucky because we kind of started coming up during the age of social media, the social media boom. So what I thought of was really like make that's that same plan I said earlier, where just be productive and put it out there. That's what that was the game plan, the basic game plan from before. Make something, put it out into the world, and then try to get as many eyes on it as possible. And maybe someone important will see it, and that's kind of how it worked out. I used I used to just make stickers. Just print out my own stickers at local print shops, post it on Instagram. People wanted to buy them. So I started going to bazaars and selling stickers there. Put my name on everything I could, like everything a camera could, could look at. And then the audience grew and then more eyes came on my work, put out more stuff, more eyes, more projects. That's just kind of the, mm. the way it went. Um, I already know like the story, but can you let the viewers know? Um, <laughs> can you let the story or let them know the story of how you got the Shake Shack gig? Similar to you, you mentioned. About oh, oh yeah, I did say that. Oh, that's interesting. I, I forgot about that. Um, the Shake Shack gig was because I did a lot of uh, hashtags. That's basically it. It's really interesting that I got a, uh, an email from the girl who worked at um, the company and brought in Shake Shack. And... We had this meeting. It was a great meeting. She told me about the project. She told me it was going to be the first Shake Shack in Manila. I was super excited. And then I asked her at the end of the meeting, how did you find me? That's usually, I usually ask clients that just so I know, you know, it's market research. 
And she said, oh, we just put in, we just searched hashtag mural artist Manila and your name came up and we liked your work. So I was really surprised because you'd think hashtags are stupid, especially before. Like now, hashtags are a big part of the way things are. Course, yeah. It's not that cringy. But before five, five, six years ago, it, it was pretty cringy. Like you put in a bunch of hashtags, but you kind of have to because that's really, that's how algorithms learn what, who you are and what kind of people to push your work to. So I got lucky I, because I put in hashtags. All because you put in hashtags. But of course, you put in the hashtags to the work that you would keep on pushing. So Yeah, of course. It's not just weird hashtags for, for weird projects. Of course, there are times that if, um, if you're fortunate enough that projects keep on coming uh, because people see your work, they hire you. What would happen or what would you do if there was ever a lull in between projects? Because I'm sure, I mean, of course, you've had projects after projects, but there has to be a time that there are no projects that are coming your way or as frequent as you would want. What steps did you do to get that ball rolling again um there's a saying i always uh, i know a lot of sayings i say a lot of sayings to myself it says if uh, opportunity doesn't knock build a better door so sometimes there are laws definitely especially in the years i've actually kind of gotten really uh good at predicting the waves in which projects come in it's the seasons of it but sometimes when it's been a couple of weeks and nothing's been coming up and i don't know what's coming up next like my months are free after it's like, well, I guess it's time to build a better door, which means just make something new, um, something no one's ever seen before. Kind of update yourself, refresh yourself. So if I made a, a mural and it's been four, four weeks to a month uh, of nothing coming up, put in work again, make, in, make something new, put it out. And just to let others know that I'm still active, I'm still making work, I'm still innovating, I'm still trying. And like I said, like it's weird, but the algorithm kind of pushes your work again if you just keep on making stuff. Okay, so just always making sure that people know that you're still alive. Yeah, like I'm still active. I'm still doing something. And if my current portfolio isn't good enough for others, like build a better door. Make something new, something different that you haven't done before. Okay, that's good. It's always just making the opportunity to make sure that the, like, of course, business-wise, we still have to talk, th- think about the business. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Um, on that note, we also, one of the sayings, we are, we're all about sayings now, about follow your passion and you'll never work a day in your life. Does this uh, uh, saying still apply to you wholeheartedly or how does, how does this feeling like reside with you right now? Uh, well, doing my taxes isn't my passion, so it feels like work. <laughs> but but it does it does make a lot of sense because not it does feel like work you know even if you're you love what you're doing it still feels like work but you never feel unrewarded i feel like that's the answer that's there. a great way to phrase it you yeah. never feel like you know sometimes and i'm not like judging people with uh, with their jobs if you hate your job i know people who hate their job because at the end of the day they sit in bed or wherever and they feel like i don't know where all that time went i don't know where it went where where I'm going, I just sat in the desk for eight hours and I don't know what's going to come from it. But if you love your job and, you know, so I sit at a desk for eight hours just drawing, but at the end of the day, I know where that's going to go. Um, so yeah, if you love your job, if you love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work, but I feel like it's more like if you love what you're doing, it never feels like it's for nothing. Okay, Even if it's like a normal job, but if you're passionate about it, at the end of the day, when you lie in bed, I think when you feel like, I know where this is going to go, where all that time went. I think that's what it's all about. That's a really great way to phrase it because, of course, um, we're, we have to be realistic. Not everyone can have the luxury or the privilege to follow their passion. So, of course, yours would be art. So, you're pushing for it. Me, I love coaching people. So, that's what I've been doing um, ever since. Um, a lot of people don't have the luxury to do that just because of you know circumstances. So, we do have to, I guess, consider ourselves lucky. Extremely lucky, yeah. That the industry that we are interested in or that passionate about actually will uh, that it does produce continuous opportunities to make sure that we're um, our lives that we're able to maintain our lifestyles we're happy we're able to pay our bills so we have to consider ourselves lucky to all the people that don't have that same luxury hopefully outside of work you have your joy because I know a lot of people as well that uh, as Jappy mentioned they're not happy with their jobs what they're doing from nine to five but if you can find meaning outside of that then that's perfectly fine as well not everyone can chase their passions but that doesn't mean that not everyone can live a happy life yeah for sure something that we always have to uh, remind ourselves 
But all right. So now we were able to talk about yourself, uh, what your future plans and how it all started. Now I want us to I want to ask some questions that might help anybody who like any aspiring local artist. And I'm pretty sure you've talked about this in the past because you've done a good number of I would say IG lives or <laughs> yeah. like um Q and A's. Q and Q and A's. So yeah, um, you've talked about it a lot in your channel or on your page. But of course, now let's talk about it again. What specific advice do you have for aspiring local artists who want to work towards a more successful career as an artist? Not necessarily following your footsteps to be like the next or a similar Japia Gonzillo, but if somebody is into art, what how concrete steps can they take to take their career to the next level? Hmm. I think uh, just in general, actually, not just for the artists out there, but in general, you have to start thinking about things in a more practical light. Um, it's easy to follow your passion. Like I said, when I was, went to art school, I thought, oh, it's going to be a dream come true, but it isn't because there's a, there's a lot of reality involved in it. And I think that you have to start thinking about your your career, your trajectory in a more practical light it's just like how you started with coaching it can't just be like i'll coach people and i'm gonna be happy all the time no you have to think about how the business will work out how your how the budgets will work out how the money's gonna come in how the scheduling works just the same with with art or with any other more passion kind of career it's like you can't just say i'm gonna draw all the time i'm gonna paint all the time it's like how many drawings a day do you have to do and how are you going to get that out into the world um, how many clients can you take in a month and how much are you going to charge them? Yep. If you're going to pay taxes, how are you going to pay the taxes? So it's really about becoming more practical and realistic with that dream, whether it's art or coaching or, or you know anything else, music, whatever. You have to be very practical if you want to take it to the next level. If you want to take it from just drawing to this is my career, as weird as it sounds, following your dreams has to be very realistic. Okay, that's actually really good advice. And the word that I like the most when you were talking about that would be trajectory because it's not just you know point a to point b there is something there's a lot that's going to happen between point a and point b you have to know what the trend is i mean the trend of your own hard work what it's produced and how you can level it up for yourself because everyone has different you know background situations and i guess skill level so of course your timeline might be different from somebody else's but as Jappy said, you just have to be more practical. You have to be realistic with whatever you'd want to aim for. And nonetheless, continuously put out the work, like put the hard work in. Because of course, people won't know your services if you don't like show people that this is the service that you can produce. So it's always about understanding your trajectory and what you want to get out of it. Yeah. Now, if you were to have, or to especially, again, this can apply for any local artists or anyone who just wants to be successful in their career. If you were to share three <laughs> Japi Agoncillo guiding principles oh, no. or <laughs> mindsets to have for life, what would it be? I, wrote, wow. I, wrote, I, wrote, I said three, but this let's do what you can. I think I'm just going to go back to those sayings I said earlier. Um, there's one that's, you know, that I, I've been saying this to myself since high school, be so good they can't ignore you. Um, it's really, it really just means like make good work and things will fall into place. If, if you're too burnt out to think about everything else, if you're too, if it gets too overwhelming to think about the business side of things, to think about the practical side of things, make good work, put it out there and things will fall into place. I think that's number one. Um, another thing is, you know, that championship mentality type thing. Um, I copied like that's from C bum, but you know. See, I'm a fitness guy. Uh, no, it's really like you have to keep pushing yourself as much as possible. You don't get comfortable like, oh, I'm good with the way I draw eyes. It's just like for artists, I'm good with the way I draw eyes. And that's it. Why don't you keep trying to get better at drawing eyes than faces, than bodies, than, than people? Or if you look at your work and you say, I'm good with the way this is, then you're, you've stopped growing. Championship mentality is just all about one upping yourself, putting in the effort to grow. Um, you true. always have to put in the effort to grow, or else you go stale, and then nothing happens to you. Um, and last, I think, is that one. Uh, what did they say earlier? I don't know. Man. <laughs> uh, when opportunity doesn't knock, build a better door. Uh, in a way, it's also about not quitting. When you know, sometimes things will go dry in any of your endeavors, whether it be art or coaching or music or, or videos. Things will go dry, and you have to think. I could either start 
accepting that I'm gonna fail, like this is failing, or start working towards making it work. You know, it's either okay, no one's hiring me anymore. I guess this whole art thing is done, or no, I gotta buckle down, make more work, and keep it going. So okay. those are the three Jappy Agoncillo ish things that I've right. taken from other people because those are not my sayings. But um, nonetheless, <laughs> obviously, uh, any principle or any mindset that we can like go about, it's not ours, but yeah. it's just something that we definitely want to go about because mm-hmm. it's what's going to help us. We can't um, you know, go about life, I guess, aimlessly. Yeah. I mean, of course, there are some people that, you know, I guess they just want to live life, have fun, but. Um, I guess to people listening to this episode who have ambitious goals, they have want to achieve major like big things in their life. These are mindsets that Jappy have that Jappy has shared that can definitely be helpful. Now, we're done talking about the art stuff. We're done yeah. talking about you. Now let's talk about the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Great segue. All right, very straightforward. Jappy, what's your best bench press? <laughs> oh man, two. You were there. Two sixty-five. 265. 265. That's for one rep, right? One rep, Max. All right. So I, at the beginning of this episode, I mentioned that Jappy is probably the strongest uh, muralist or artist here in the Philippines. So is, if there's any artist out there that has a bench that's stronger than 265, please mention or please comment down below so I, I can put Jappy to shame. I'd actually really enjoy that because I like, Fushu knows this, that I, I push myself uh, through competition. So if you guys could do better than 265, anyone who paints, do better than 265. Hit me up and I will try to do better or die trying. You believe everyone's already 315, 315. Well, to be fair, it's been many years. It's uh, been many years already. Four, five years before pandemic. So I haven't tried out recently. Damn. So both of us are actually past our fitness primes. Oh, no. Don't tell me. This is it. We uh, just start going downhill from here. Let's just forget our careers and focus <laughs> on lifting because, you know, that's that's where the real pride is. How sometimes, much you can I, that, sometimes I just want to do that. Actually, yeah. It's ironic because, you know, since I'm my business is coaching i'm actually not <laughs> able to focus my own lifting <laughs> but all right so actually that's all oh okay been, <laughs> just the bench. No, 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 no. because i can't squat or deadlift oh uh, yeah um because somebody has a bad knee well i can't squat my squat's terrible that's 285 it's for an artist that's fine <laughs> for an artist, my deadlift's 340 very good and that was all pre-pandemic like 2018 i think 2018 is the last time i checked it so all right Probably maybe someday worse. you'll get the 400 pounds that'll be great or, or worse. Or worse. <laughs> or worse, no. I mean, of course, there's actually just another fitness thing that I wanted to ask about you, uh, like for you. So despite having a busy schedule like with, uh, revolving around work, why do you still work out harder than the regular guy? Like <laughs> Some people, um, I guess most people who have jobs that are not related to fitness, again, this is excluding the actual competitive athlete. You, who has a job that's far from fitness, why do you push yourself in the gym so much, whether that be for your lifts or for you and your boxing? Um, I guess there's also, there's a big kind of mindset part to it that, uh, again, it all comes back to like pushing yourself and all that, where being able to to do the hard work, do if you get up early and, or whatever time you want to work out, but if you put in the hard work each day, it feel physically, it feels a lot easier to do the other things the rest of the day. Like if in the morning I can go an hour boxing straight, like super hard work, like a thousand five hundred calories burned or whatever. Then then the rest of the day, if I feel like oh I don't want to do this email thing, like well if you can if you can burn uh, fifteen hundred calories in the, in an hour in the morning, you can definitely get through these emails. Or or oh, I don't want to I don't want to paint this part of the thing today. I just want to lay around. But if you could. If you got up at 5 a.m. to to deadlift 300 pounds, you can definitely paint for just a couple hours. So it's That's really true. like a mindset thing where if I can hard do hard work here, then I can do hard work anywhere else. Mm. That's a good mindset because, of course, a lot of people, they have the opposite where they'd rather work hard in, uh, what do you call this, the office and just forget their fitness. But, of mm-hmm. course... Once they hit their late 30s or 40s, that's all going to bite them in the butt because yeah. <laughs> they realize that that's what they should have been doing when they were in their teens or in their 20s. Yeah. And unfortunately unfortunately for us, we are already on our late 20s. Weird. Uh, so and we're going to start getting like that. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because I guess because we were trying to push ourselves so too much, like more than we should have in our <laughs> early 20s. Now in our late 20s, we feel like we have the bodies of... Like 40-year-olds. Well, we have joint problems. We have definitely have joint problems. But yeah, um, Jappy, that was an amazing episode. Uh, we were able to really talk about uh, like 
general hard work, very intentional hard work because we want to make sure that with the goals that we've set for ourselves that we're not just going to have those goals but we're actually going to do our best to work towards those goals Jappy will be leaving in a few days uh, for New York as of this recording we this is January 17 he'll be leaving when? Uh, on Friday the 20th Friday Friday the 20th we're all excited for you um, we're all um, wishing you the best when it comes to New York, we're all happy that we're going to have more fun hangouts without Jappy. Ah, uh, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. But of course, um, nonetheless, um, not to be cheesy, um, but we, as a friend, I'll just say that we as a group, because I don't want it to come from me. We do appreciate your friendship that we've had for the, couple of, uh, for the past, I guess, decade already. And since we are like close friends, we do really wish you the best. And we're excited to see what's going to happen or the things that you will make happen in New York City. That's a great way to put it. Just kidding. We all actually all hate him <laughs> and we're so excited for him to leave. But nonetheless, <laughs> that was episode 22 of The Foo Show. We're signing off. Jappy, say bye to everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.